Good morning. It's good to have you back with us again this morning as we are continuing to bring you Sunday School lessons in your home, on your TV, uh, on your iPhone or, or Android as you uh, are trying to engage with God's Word and God's people during this time of social distancing. As you can see, I'm all by myself. I have officially run off everyone from my office. No, in all honesty, you see other videos probably are much better than mine, and I would encourage you to watch John or Tara's videos, uh, as we were guilty last week, unbeknownst or unaware um, by me, for sure, that we were breaking the social distancing uh, protocol of our nation, and even as we as a church are trying to uh, submit to and enforce uh, as a church body. And so this morning and continuing on from this point forward, we'll be offering you three different videos, one from me, one from John uh, geared uh, more toward our students and one from Tara geared toward our children. And so we as a church continue to walk through God's word and uh, the neat thing being all on the same uh, pacing God going through the entirety of God's word. Uh, it makes this an, a nice time and, and prayerfully a time where we as a family can come together and discuss God's word because we as a church want you as a family uh, to be the disciple makers. As moms and dads, our number one job and responsibility is disciple our children. Even before we're discipling others in the community of God's people, we should be discipling our own children. And so we prayerfully hope that that has taken place in your family and that these videos are a, are a resource and a help for you uh, spurring conversation, discussion around God's Word. And so this morning, we will be in Luke chapter 2 uh, as we continue uh, to bounce around the Gospels as we are seeing sort of a, a biography of Jesus uh, in these days in our Sunday School lessons. And so today we actually pick up where we left off last week in Luke chapter 2. And so this morning, uh, I'm going to try to give you guys some questions to discuss at your home. Uh, or maybe you're watching this by yourself, and so to give you an opportunity to discuss with a friend via phone, uh, via FaceTime or Skype or Zoom, uh, as you engage uh, with with people uh, to get that um, social interaction that we all as humans crave, more, more so for others uh, than for some. But uh, this morning, a question I, I want to pose to you is this. How has church changed in your lifetime? For the good or for the bad? And so discuss that um, with those people you're watching with. Now, this morning, our, our objective and our desire is, like I said, to pick up where we left off last week in Luke's gospel. And so uh, I want us uh, to read Luke 2, verses 40 through 52. And so I want to give you the, the opportunity there in your home uh, to read God's Word out loud. Uh, what an awesome opportunity for moms and dads to read God's Word uh, over their over their families, uh, or even to have uh, kids beginning to read the Word uh, and to walk through. And maybe if you're like us with little, little ones, it's the opportunity for them to begin finding uh, passage of scripture and understanding how the Bible is laid out and intentional time for me to help my children actually find where is Luke? What does chapter two, verse 40? How do you find that? And so look, look into your Bible and read Luke two verses 40 to 52. And then we'll come back and discuss that and walk through together. So the, this morning, we are continuing looking at Jesus as a child. And so as we talked about last week, we don't see everything that probably we want to learn about our Savior as a child, right? And so last week we were looking at him as he was dedicated some 40 days or so after his birth, and now he's 12 years old, right? And so a lot of time has elapsed. Uh, he maybe came back from Egypt when he was six or so. And so he's living in uh, the northern region of Israel, known as Galilee or Nazareth. And so they pilgrimage down to uh, Jerusalem. And so they come south to Jerusalem. But as we've talked about often, Jerusalem was on a mount, right? And so it was a huge city that they didn't have a lot of in those days. And so it's always talked about going up to Jerusalem. And so one of the interesting things that we see here is that they went every year. 
They went every year. And why does the scripture say that they went every year? They went every year for the Feast of Passover. And so a question I have to pose to you and, and want you to engage with is, what is Passover? Can you explain Passover? Can you explain it to your kids? Kids, can you explain it to your parents? You can look to uh, Exodus, I think it's chapters 11 and 13, which describe for us what Passover is all about. And so you see that Jesus would have went every year of his life down uh, to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Uh, and it says he's 12 years old. And I, I wonder, who do you know that's 12 years old? And how do they act and behave? And so I want you to think about that 12-year-old, and that's the age that Jesus is in this moment. And so this, this passage is very familiar to many of us because it gives us as parents, right, on our worst days, we, we feel pretty good about ourselves because it was like, oh, oh, at least I didn't lose the Savior of mankind for three days, right? Like I may have misplaced my kid in Walmart or under a, a, a clothing rounder for a couple of minutes, and I may have freaked out but I didn't leave him for three days, right? And so we try to pat ourselves on the back like we're better than Joseph and Mary because we didn't do that. But but we must understand that in those days, they've had to travel probably around 70 miles, right? And they're traveling on foot. They're traveling in a caravan of people and they're leaving, right? And most likely the men are together, the women and children are together, and Jesus is 12 years old. And so this would have been the year before he would have become in their culture a man. And so you think about this, that he's treated like a child in this year, but the next year when they go back to the temple, he will be a man. And so think about the fact that for three days, Jesus survived and he thrived as a 12-year-old in this huge city in the temple for three days without his parents. Your kids can't fix yourself a Pop-Tart for three days. At 12 years old, right? Maybe that's maybe that's been too harsh, right? But we see how the difference of culture is, and so let's not put a lot of blame on Joseph and Mary for misplacing the Savior of the universe, uh, and understand that God is providentially doing something amazing as He's trying to teach us and show us um, some realities here. And so we see that Jesus is focused. He's focused on his mission that he has come to do, right? And so we know he is fully human and he is fully divine, right? And we talk about the hypostolic union, right, um, that, that exists, those, those two realities existing together in one flesh. And so um, I wonder which of those two is most mind-boggling to you this morning. And maybe you have just a, a, a dialogue about that um, and knowing that, I don't know if there's anybody on the planet that can fully articulate uh, those twin realities existing in one flesh. And so we see that, that Jesus is fully human, and we see that he's growing. We see that he's doing some amazing things. And then you see um, in verse 49 where he, he just simply says to his mom, he's like, where else would I be? He's focused on the proclamation of the kingdom of God. Jesus does a lot of amazing things, and we're going to see those over the course of the next few weeks as we read about his, his ministry, right? But understand that Jesus' main objective and priority was to teach about the kingdom of God, right? It wasn't first and foremost about helping or healing the sick. Healing and helping was always a means to get them to life eternal. And so, Jesus is focused. He is prioritizing the best over the good. And so we know the difference between good and bad, right? We can make a decision on that, good or bad. But can we make a, a, a wise decision when it comes to uh, good and best, right? Jesus was doing the best thing, and that was focusing on his heavenly Father and teaching about his heavenly father. But we see there that as they go back to Nazareth in verse 51, that Jesus is submissive, right? We think that's a dirty word, that, that we can't say we're submissive to anyone. If Jesus is able to submit himself, why would you and I not be able to submit ourselves to our employer, uh, wives to their husbands, right? Why would we not be able to have children to our parents? Why would we not be able to do that? And so we learn from Jesus about submission, 
right? That we are to be a people of submission, right? As Christians, we know that full well, that we are to submit. And then the last thing we see there is Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Man, what an incredible verse to pray over your children. And so I wonder, are you praying those things? As we pray scripture, are we praying that our kids would increase in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man? What, what great words to pray. And so I encourage you to pray those things over your children. I, I, I encourage you to talk about those things with your children, that why you are praying those things uh, and why that is. And so would we be a people that would seek to love uh, the Lord? And so in closing, I just want to ask, how can you grow in wisdom and in favor with God and others. How are you going to do that? And so maybe that's something you discuss as a family unit. How how can we grow in favor with God and with others? How are we growing in favor with our neighbors? How are we growing in favor with our Heavenly Father? So let me pray for us and um, feel free to, to let us know any feedback on this. Father God, thank you for your love. God, we thank you that you are able and capable of growing us in favor with with you and with men. And so help us, Father, uh, we pray. Holy Spirit, amen. And so just remember, uh, we're here for you. If we can do anything as a church, please let us know. Uh, and also please let me, John, or Tara know how we can do these lessons better uh, if you'd rather see uh, more interactive things or what. So we want to hear from you. Please let us know. Uh, we love you. We miss you. And uh, we're just a phone call away. See you.